Welcome to Games and Beer number 58. Uh, we're going to be playing Kotar again. And uh, we'll be waiting for this to uh, go uh, live. Popped up the chat. The way, this, uh, the way this goes is I play a game for a little bit, and then I do some videos, and everybody's happy. And I get progressively drunker as the show goes on. What is up, Dylan? I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your last name. Hey, Rendar Smith. So uh, we're going to be playing that, uh, and then we'll be looking at some videos. Probably the Robert De Niro meltdown and maybe anything on the fucking impeachment thing, which is a pile of dog shit anyway. So, um, so yeah, we'll be playing uh, Kotar and, uh, and doing that. I'm just waiting for the... Um, I'm just waiting for the uh, bar to go green. Uh, do I play WoW Classic? Uh, the answer to, it, to that is no. I didn't play WoW when it was a when it was like new back in the day, like when it was at its height when like South Park did that episode. I just the the I don't really play a lot of MMORPGs. The reason I don't is because you know I was there like when they first became a thing and they were pay to play. And it's like, if I'm paying 15 bucks a month for a game, I feel like I have to play it. So the fun is kind of gone. You know, so I'm not playing this because I want to play it. I'm playing this because I'm paying money for it. So, and I, I know I know a lot of the other games are like that too. Um, they're freemium or, or whatever. So, no, I didn't play. And also, I've never been a big Warcraft fan, believe it or not. Uh, I played Warcraft 2 a little bit. I, it's just, I, I just, I, I don't know. I'm, I've never been a big fan of that, that type of game. So, World of Warcraft was not that, it, it never appealed to me. Um, the last MMORPG I played was, uh, Warhammer Online. I don't know if it still exists. Uh, but that, I, I got one little quick funny story with that, and then we'll get into the game. Um that was really a big thing on realm versus realm where it's like team versus team combat. You'd have a bunch of players on the light side and then a bunch of players on the evil side and they, they, they'd fight anyway, before the match starts, you're in this little like area and uh, you know, you got about a minute or a minute or two or whatever the fuck it was. And I just typed in like I used to type in before uh, on Full Tilt Poker back when you could actually play for money. I, I, I like to do sit and go games uh, with like six or nine people. And I, I type in, you know, hey, what's everybody drinking? And I get a list back, you know, wine, scotch, beer, uh, rum and cokes, uh, you know, whatever. I typed it into the fucking Warhammer online and I get... Everything from, A, I don't believe you're drinking, which is like, well, I, I can't remember how old I was at the game, but it's like, no, I'm well over 21, so yes, I am, to it's disrespectful to be to play a game while you're drinking, which is odd, to one person said it's illegal to game and drink, which is even more bizarre, Two, of course, people saying, uh, oh, beers for pussy. I'm drinking straight Jack Daniels, which I knew they weren't. Oh, okay, to be fair, they might have been, but it's such a cliche to answer. Anyway, let's get into the game, which is going to be more fun. Trump ripping Biden or Warren. Uh, Warren would be a hell of a lot more fun than Biden. I don't even know if Biden's going to survive to the end of the election, believe it or not. Uh, but Warren is going so fucking far left that she can't win. Anyway, let's get into this. Kotar. What do you think of Spidey being back in the MCU? I kind of knew it was going to happen. Uh, God damn it. Okay, can this go down? Okay, I need this up. Oh, 
my god. Can I kindly get my fucking chat out? Oh my god, I bought two screens for a goddamn reason. Okay, now, can I? Thank you, you piece of shit. Back when Bioware was good. I'll second that. Uh, okay. I... Ah, fuck it. I'll do this. Just before my match with Bendak, or did I kill him already? What? Why? Get away from! What? Get away! It's a good thing a few of the Sith come in. You aren't from Terrace, are you? Have you heard? It's a good thing a few of the Sith nope, come in here to relax and off duty. To keep them from closing this door. You aren't from Terrace, are you? Do yourself a Have you heard? Bendak Starkiller's coming out of retirement. I almost feel bad for the blaster fodder who's going up against you. Hey, I saw you win the big swoop race. You like Pazak? I Have you gone into the music room in the... Hey, you heard the latest rumor? Bendik Starkiller is coming out of retirement for... Hey, I saw you win the big swoop race. Isn't this band great? I don't know what the guys in here find so attractive. Have you heard? Someone's gonna fight Bendik Starkiller in an illegal death match. I should go talk to that hut and try to get... Some you know, it's bad enough the Sith con... And that quarantine must be tough. Have you heard? Bendik Starkiller is coming out of retirement. I have to get tickets for that match. Ladies and gentlemen, come with me now on a journey to the savage days of years gone by, to a time when two combatants entered the arena and only one came out alive. They're illegal. They're banned. They've been outlawed for nearly ten years, but we've got one for you tonight. A good old-fashioned death match! In this corner, a living legend. A man whose very name would make his opponent shake in their boots. If any of them were still alive, <laughs> out of retirement for one last battle, Bandit Starkiller! Who would be crazy enough to step into the ring with such a lethal Holy legend? Reagan. Who would be I'm mad not. enough to face almost certain death Probably merely not. for your enjoyment? Ladies and gentlemen, feast your Nixon. wondering eyes on the mysterious stranger. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let the God damn it. How can you not hear me? I'm... Okay. Oh, oh, I know. I know. Hold on. Okay. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I... I ha God damn it. Son of a bitch. Uh, I hate this fucking game at times.
Okay, can this kindly... Thank you! Jesus fucking Christ. I don't think you had a chance against Bendik. I mean, nobody's gonna be stupid enough to go up against you anymore. <laughs> this is great. You beat Bendik. You're a legend. Whenever anyone asks, I can say I was the first duelist to... Great, you're yeah, the most famous me. loser. I never thought anyone would beat Star. As a little girl, I used to dream of meeting him one day. When I finally... And now, he's dead. There's probably a lesson... I recognize you. I never thought anyone would ever be bent. Twitch is my favorite. I never saw a death match before. I thought it would be exciting, but it was actually kind of gross. Hey, you're one of the duelists. The one that you beat Bendix Starkill. Twitch is my favorite. I never saw. Who cares? Although I do want to put, I believe, being Dark Star Killers. Uh, fucking. Blaster pistol in his hand. And I think we're good. What? Okay, I think I have to go and yippy yap to what's his hey, face. I saw you win the big swoop race. You like Pazak? Have you gone into the music room? Hey, I know you. You're the mysterious stranger. I saw you. Hey, I saw you win the big swoop race. Isn't this band? I don't. Did you hear the news? Bendit got dusted in that death match. I'll never get a chance to see something like that again. I can't believe I didn't get a ticket. Yeah, it's because you suck. It's a good thing a few of the Sith come in here to relax when they're off duty. That should keep them from closing. You aren't from Terrace. I know you. You're the one who killed Bendix Starkiller in that death match. Too bad the quarantine has made Teresian A. It's a good thing a few of the Sith come in here to relax. You aren't from Terrace. I know you. You're the one who killed Bendix Starkiller. Did you hear about the big fight at the swoop races? I I'm surprised the Sith haven't done anything to try to bring in Davik. After all, everyone knows he the Sith are hunting for any Republic's you. You're the one who killed Bendix Starkiller, aren't you? Ho ho, what a match! Best duel I ever saw. You know, you might want to lay low for a while. It's a good thing if you You aren't from Terrace, are you? Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. Attacks more kick than most off Collect my money on a... Pretty soon, all of Terrace will be talking about how... The more well-known you are, the more ch... No. What do you want? Have you come here just to bother me? If you ever wish... Don't you just love watching... No, I don't jerk off to Bazak players. Uh, lived through Clinton, W, and Obama. It's weird to think a title like Trump is the best out of all of them. Uh, Kennedy was the best. Bush was the worst. Um, look, I've lived through Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush Jr., Obama and Trump. I lived through six presidents. I like Trump, but I just I like Trump. I mean, I'm sorry, but he really kind of pulled the nose up on the fucking ship. 
you know, do I like everything Trump fucking does? No, of course not. That'd be incredibly stupid. Hey, look who's back. The miss if times weren't so t You know, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm sorry. I, if, it, if it means I'm a dick for saying I'm putting my country first, then fine. Fuck it, I'm a dick. Anyway, bye 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 and a few ion grenades too. And if I have to, I'll cheat again to get my money. I heard the Sith are sending sal- I've got a ton of things to do- I heard the gangs are- I heard the Sith are- I've got a ton of things to do today, I can't talk to you. Stay out of the lower city. I wonder if any of those- Taurus used to be a- Stay out of the I wonder if any of those Republic space pods survived crash landing in the Undercity. I love how the Sith are supposedly so oppressive, but they don't give a shit that I'm- Just That's fuck it. I was wondering something. How did those Vulcans manage to capture a famous Jedi like you? Well, were you knocked out when your escape pod crashed? N no, I was conscious. But my Force powers were exhausted from using my battle meditation in the battle for the End of Spire. Without oh, myself, shit. I might have never gotten off the ship alive. Fair enough, but I've seen you Jedi in action. There's, there's no way those thugs could have stood a chance against your lightsaber. My lightsaber was misplaced. I couldn't find it after the crash. I looked everywhere in that pod. The Vulcus came and overwhelmed me, even as I was searching for Uh, what do I think is Trump's worst policy, not including Twitter usage or subpar vocabulary? <laughs> I mean, isn't that a violation of some kind of Jedi code or something? This is no laughing matter. During the um, crash, my lightsaber must have... It must have fallen from my belt and rolled under my seat. The Vulcus probably found it there when they I don't the know hey, if hey, the China thing, sorry, the China trade war thing, has netted us anything. Maybe it has. I, I don't know. I don't see it. Um, I hardly consider myself a legend, Khan. Though I will consider your advice when I relate these events to the Jedi Council. You know, I, I'm not the biggest fan of his thing with North Korea. I guess. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, if it brings us peace in that region, then so goddamn be it, you know? Okay, I need to deliver the, the fucking uh, serum. Uh, why are women wearing clothes in this world? Welcome back. You have the syrup, can... Hmm, let me see. The people of Terrace owe you a debt they can never repay. Please, take this small reward. It is... You truly have a noble and... That's very kind of you. We're just glad we're able to bring some relief to the suffering of these people. Well, I want, uh, uh well, Bastion's sweet you. pussy later, so... Anyway. Um, let me take a look at what you got for sale. Rackville Serum. Buy. Uh, buy these advanced med packs. Okay, and light side point gained, and yay, that quest is complete. Blow it. Yeah, shut up. Oh, that's when this happens. Get out of here, you goggle eyed. Yeah. Go Why do you care what happens to some scummy alien? He's just. Yeah, he is. Even
Come on, let's go. I don't want to listen to... Okay, no, I don't want to go in there. I want to go down back to the lower city. Collect my. Did you ever think about joining all the Jedi who were running off to follow Revan and Malak when they went to. That was nearly five years ago. I was still an apprentice. My battle meditation hasn't even manifested itself. I guess. Still, do you ever wonder if things could have been different? Or would Revan and Malak still have been corrupted? Do not blame Revan's corruption on the Council. Your Republic saw only the threat of the Mandalorians, but the wisdom of the Ma There was something lurking out there. Something that devoured Revan and Malak, and many other Jedi. Had the Council sent us all into the unknown, how many- So you're saying we should have done nothing? Just let the Mandal- We did not abandon you. But the Council were not about to throw- Revan and Malak offered a quicker answer. You asked me if I think things could have been different. I know they could have. If Revan had only listened to the Council, millions of innocent people- Yeah, right. And every single one of them would have been speaking their own. I, I think we're done here. Let's just get back to the- How can I help? Then I suggest- Blah, blah. Let's talk to the black guy. I've got a ton of things to do today. I heard the gangs of over. I heard the Sith are sending salvage teams down to the Undercity to recover those Republic escape. Listen to me, people. Brother. I hear the crime lord. Check this out. We've got a real live celebrity here. The mysterious stranger mixing with the common. Listen to me, people. That is a terrible scourge sweeping our planet. Heed my warning before it. King Kun Shi, I we team him. Kipuna, bona naki. You'd think people. Genjopa chawi ti chop twees yun china pala mula. Let's see, I like Twilight Sweet Ass, but fuck it. Can chop a chawi tea chop twees yun kun? What to yama kama wuna? Tinku ukapa? Topa no aska. Okie dokie. Because I gotta go back to the Undra City. Do Visa and Green Hard Colders enjoy First and Second Amendment rights? Now before we are overrun with the vermin invaders. Um. A plague spreads through they should. I don't know about... Visa holders are just basically people visiting us uh, for a week, two weeks, a month, two months. Th but they should if they're in my country. Uh, green card holders, I believe, are trying to become citizens. So, green card holders most definitely do, um, because they're trying to become citizens. Pretty much everybody in America enjoys it. And that's the problem for America when we go to places like Canada that have fucking hate speech laws. Pieces of trash. are run by a fucking pussy neither of us is getting off this planet but we've got a small problem i haven't heard about anyone if you want me to help glad to hear it 
Okay, yeah, I'm just going to collect a fucking bounty, you worthless piece of shit. I know I haven't done everything. Alright, let's go back up, break into the Sith thing. Uh, what if you have a working visa? I, again, you should have... I mean, I don't... Here's the thing, if you say something in America, under our laws, you should be fine, considering that fucking there's other pussy ass countries that throw our citizens in fucking jail because they dared say something that pissed off some member of the goddamn trans community like in Canada where you can fucking get it thrown in jail because you dared misgender a trans person oh, I'm in the wrong business davik has got a piece of everyone's action I should have been huh. If the Sith... You beat Bendak Starkiller. Nobody's ever beaten Bendak. Oh, I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it with my own... So, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, so, as long as you're in the country, you should be fine. Um, and by the way, everyone else's speech laws suck. Unless you adopt my version of it. Uh, sorry, I'm a little biased in the matter. But... There's a reason why America's the best in this, because short of threatening someone or slandering someone, you pretty much say whatever you want. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I think. I know they fuck it. I guarantee you this law is going to get this law is going to get blown up. You can't. You can't find someone for calling somebody something. It's unconstitutional. So it's going to get blown up. I have to pee. I will be right back. See everyone in a minute. And we're going to go blow up the Sith base. Uh, yeah, in in New York, they passed or they passed a law that says you can be fined two hundred fifty grand if you call somebody an illegal alien. 
that is not going to fly in the United States of America. This has happened before. I think Chicago had something. I think L.A. and San Fran had some shit. And it always gets destroyed. The ACLU always takes it up, and it always... So, yeah, sorry. Sorry, New York. Go fuck yourself, you pieces of shit. You know, and honestly, who gives a fuck if somebody calls somebody an illegal alien if that's what they fucking are? Yeah, oh, did I hurt your feelings? Well, I don't give a shit. Well, they're facing a two or three billion dollar deficit. You know, they're not as bad as L.A. or San Fran, which are just covered in heroin needles. And we are going to... God damn it, Married Party Selection. Add. Okay. Close. Maybe I should have done mission. Whatever. Who cares? Kavadumpa kapalia monapata. King Konshi kachin awana wamat bonana kachu. Now let's fuck some shit up. Yes. What? Uh huh. Yes. What? have to do a damn thing. I don't know if the West is dying, Malcolm. I think we're just at a crossroads. You know, I... I, I here's the thing. The media would like you to believe the West is dying. But your average American citizen, I don't see that from. I don't. I'm sorry, Robert De Niro 
and Greta Thunberg or Thunberg or whatever the fuck you call her doesn't speak for the rest of us. I know Rome fell, I get it. But here's the thing. Trump's election is a perfect response. How do you think Western... Oh, thank you for the compliment on the uh, shirt, uh, DJ Scuff. Um, I, I think... The thing is, is that... You know, the right is... The, the left is going to have to have a complete meltdown before they rebuild. Um... They're, they're just embracing things that are impossible. Um, but no, I don't, I don't see America going down the same road as Rome. I don't because our, our governments are different. Our societies are different. The fucking world's different. Um... How do you think the Western or Islam Western schism is going to play out? I don't know if I ever, I've said this many times, if there's ever going to be a World War III, it's going to be the West versus Islam, not country versus country. It, it's, it's, it's going to be the West versus Islam. Not win. 
I'm here. What? Uh-huh. I'm here. What? How can I help? Then I said... What? <sighs> Fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, where... Rednar Smith says, we're nearing another economic correction. This one is going to be massive. Lion King said the West would outnumber Islam because the Asians would join us. I don't know if we're... I, I don't know about that. I don't think we are. I, I, I don't see it. I mean, these are going to happen. But I don't see it. Um, Alan Stack Bar now serving gold nuggets. I have no idea what that means. Uh, Russia and China are allies with Iran. Yeah, the problem is, is that they don't like Islam. Uh, Muslim members are not an advantage when all their technology they get from us. This is true. Also... Muslims don't like other Muslims. There's been a civil war yes. in Islam for about a thousand years. And finally, anyone in the chat ever gone through the immigration process? I, I don't know. Who dares to break my meditation? will pay for interrupting. Who would have thought a force adept could be found on this insignificant planet? But your talent is no match for a disciple of the... Ah, yes. This... can I do? Uh-huh. Sure. What can I do? What? Yes? What can I do? Uh-huh. What?
I don't know if it will or it won't be. You cannot win. Ready. What can I do? What? What do you think Love will do if Trump wins again? Honestly, the way they're going about it, I would honestly be shocked if they were anything more than than a just a nothing burger. Like they've they completely fucked themselves in this. Like, they're just kind of, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Well, and that's the problem. You have Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, whatever the fuck, bitching and complaining about us. But, you know, she didn't want to deal with, she didn't want to deal with China. It's just... Look, outside of an absolute economic collapse, Trump's going to win in 2020. Outside of an absolute economic collapse.
Is you one of the Sith? My daddy says the Sith are nothing but bullets. My mama says I have to stay out. You ever seen a swoop? Is you one of the Sith? My mama says I have to stay out. I heard the Sith are sending. I've got a ton of things. I heard the gang. I heard the Sith. I've got a ton of things to do today. I can't talk to you. Oh shit, I do gotta give Rukil his goddamn journals. I want the experience for that. China, China militarily can't stand up against us. China still relies on infantry. We have drones. Yes. I thought I said I don't want to talk. Not particularly when I think of all the men who betrayed us. The one that stands out above. You don't. I thought everyone did. But Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the... Saul was my commanding officer back when the... Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side. And I know now that he was trying to recruit me into this... Saul was my mentor. He led us to so many vic... I just... I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He not only left us for the Sith, he, he gave them the codes to bypass. I remember waking up and I, mean, I could have stopped him. I, I could have stopped it all. I blame Saul, not myself. I was, I was stupid and I ignored the danger. He knew. No, I fought Saul for years now and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it. No, no, it's not. But I don't want to talk. Actually, DJ, uh, I think if the entire world united against us, they would still fail. That's how far ahead we are. True kill. What do you want now? Have you more fables of a hidden paradise just waiting for us to find it? You may not think these are fables after you see what I have brought you, Gendar. <clears throat> Look at these journals! What? No, it can't be. Are these real, Rukil? Is this information accurate? I swear to you, everything in these journals is true, Gendar. The promised land. I told you I would find it. The entrance is far from here, Rukil. It will take us weeks to get there, perhaps even months. And we will have to cross many rat ghoul infested areas. I do not deny the journey will be hard, Gendar. But surely it is better than the miserable life we have here. Wise words, Rukil. Our supplies are high right now. We could leave by nightfall. I will tell the others to prepare for the journey. Thank you once again, Upworlder. I will say a final good... No, Upworlder, I cannot ask that. The journey will take many, many weeks, and those who make the journey cannot... When the colony was created, it was designed so that people could enter willingly, but they could never leave again. This was to ensure... We must part ways here, Up...
Why, DJ? Personally, I'm somebody that likes to avoid war, if at all possible. I mean, I'll fight it if I have to. Ah, shit, they must have executed him. Fuck! Okay, did that out of order. Son of a bitch. Alright, let's go to Kandra Soto in the Undercity. At Javier's Cantina. Personally, my top way to die is at the age of 103 with my belly full of beer and a, li and a lady's lips around my cock. Um... LA Kings fan is right. There's only one draft that has not caused riots, protests, and general upheaval. And that was World War II. Outside of that, everyone else? Yeah. I figured you'd be back. Neither of us. Now, I know the Sith military base, so what do you say? Tavik's always looking to recruit. I'll say I brought you. This is too risky. We should find a. You got another plan, sister? Or are you just objecting because you. No, I don't have another plan. I would rather not place my life. I can say the same about you. That makes us even. Fortunately, we both want to get. A While Davik's checking you out, we steal the Ebon Hawk and escape Taurus. Come on. I've got an airspeeder nearby to take us to Davik's estate. The sooner. Uh, I guess I'll take the Jedi. Well, of course, a goddamn good choice. Um. Ah, fuck it. I really have to pee. summoned me, Lord Malak. The search for Bastila is taking too long. We cannot risk her escaping Taras. Destroy the entire planet. The, the entire planet, Lord Malak? But there are billions of people on Taras. We'd be slaughtering countless innocent civilians, not to mention our own men still on the surface. Your predecessor once made the mistake of questioning my orders, Admiral. Surely you are not so foolish as to make the same mistake. Of, of course not, my Lord Malik. I will do as you command, but it will take several hours to position our fleet. Then I suggest you begin immediately. You are dismissed, Admiral. Yes, Lord Man.
So, Candorous, I see you've brought someone with you. Most intriguing, if I do say so myself. You usually travel Fucking Davik's a Jew! Candorous, you're getting soft. Watch yourself, Gallo. You may be the newest cat hound in the pack, but you aren't top dog yet. Enough. I won't have my top two men killing each other. That's not good business. I'm sure Candorous has an explanation as to why he's not working solo anymore. This is a special case, Davik. I ran into someone the exchange might want to recruit. You may have heard something of their exploits already. Ah, yes. Now I recognize your companion. The rider who won the big swoop race. Very impressive, as was your display in the rather heated battle afterwards. Uh, Kamala Harris wants Trump's Twitter account suspended. That will only help Trump in the polls. And YouTube's CE fucking dumbass, uh, Susan Wojcicki said that they can't really kick political figures off of YouTube so they can break the fucking rules while I got a tippy toe tap dance ass around. I just got, I just had a fucking rule violation for my, for my video about the, the goddamn trans people at the bar. I was holding it for for a video I made, uh, but that's not going to be up till tomorrow, so whatever. You know, Candorous was right. The exchange is always looking for new talent. You could have a bright future. With the recommendation from Candorous and a thorough background check, you could become part of the exchange. Many would kill the... Come with me. I will give you a tour of my operations. Ah, there she is. The Ebonhawk. My pride and joy. The fastest ship in the Outer Rim. Note the state-of-the-art security system I've had installed to protect her. The shields are completely impregnable. Nobody can get past them without the codes to try and steal my baby. Unfortunately, the Sith military blockade has grounded my vessel. The Ebonhawk can outrun any vessel in the galaxy. But even she isn't fast enough to avoid the auto-targeting laser cannons of the orbiting Sith fleet. I am, of course, working on acquiring the Sith departure codes so that I may come and go as I please. However, progress has been slow. But we should continue our tour. These will be your accommodations. The slave quarters are just down the hall. If you need anything during your stay, food, a massage, feel free to call upon their services. If all goes well with your background check, you will be invited to join the exchange. I'd advise you to accept the offer when it comes, or suffer the dire consequences of refusal. You will stay in these rooms as my guest for the next few days. I will not accept no for an answer. Feel free to visit the slave quarters at any time during your stay. I must warn you that if you are found anywhere outside the guest wing during your stay, or if you bother my other guests, my security forces will deal with you. I will return after the investigation into your background is complete. Until then, make yourself comfortable. Come, Callum. Let us leave our guests and... Okay, we're inside. Now all we have to do is figure out a way to get past the Ebon Hawk security system, and we can get the... No sense waiting around here, though. The sooner... Uh, I used to working night shifts, so I'm up at this time of night. It's like 1.30 in the fucking afternoon. Huh? But yeah, I kind of work the night shift, too. Um, I usually start my day about, yeah, 2, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. So, this is like midday for me. I got to bed about 6 o'clock at night.
Yes? Yes? Welcome to the slave quarters, Master. Here we have succulent fruits and berries to tempt your palate, as well as luxurious baths. <laughs> Would you like a relax? As you wish, ma- oh, Typically male. Is it possible for you to keep in mind that we have more pressing business to attend to? Shut up, bitch! I'm satisfied with the service. I have received- Thank you, kind sir. I hope you will express your appreciation to Davik. Of course. Welcome to the slave quarters now. <laughs> Would you like a relax? As you wish. Not typically male. Is I trust you. Please, I beg you. I have no wish to... Davik rarely lets us leave the slave quarters. We only know what we hear from Davik. He was caught trying to steal some spice from the lab. Normally, but since the Sith have grounded every ship on the planet, Udro doesn't get any more special treatment. They've locked him up and... I think you can get there through the hall, but Davik's certain to have guards patrol. As you wish, ma'am. Not oh, typically male. Is it possible for you? I trust you are. Hey! Thank you, kind. Of course. All right, let's go kill things. I'm here. How can I help? try to talk during these goddamn things. I have no idea how long I've been going on either. But I'm gonna I'm gonna at least get the fuck off a of terrace. <sighs> Boy do I gotta pee. Alright, I am What's the idea, Forge? Pudu. Tony Rama Napraka. Hey baby, wait. Uh-uh. No way. You're not getting out of this mess that easy. You can... 
Well, I tried. Damn no shit, they're bombing the whole planet. I knew they'd turn on the sooner or... Son of a Look bitch! Thieves in a hangar. So, you figured you'd just steal I really have to fucking pee. Sit, turn the planet into dust? Sorry, but that ain't gonna happen. I'll take care of them, Davik. I've been looking forward All to right. for a Alright, bye long everyone time. who has to leave for whatever reason. If we don't get to our ships and find somewhere safe... God, I really gotta we'll fucking kill us piss. All. You may have me outnumbered and outgunned, but if I'm going down, I'm taking all of you with me. This thermal detonator will blow us all to bits. I didn't know shit. Bring this whole hangar down around our ears. Get this ship fired. What did I play multiplayer game with the chat peasantry? Um, okay, if I was playing a game with somebody that was in my chat, I probably would. Um, but we'd have to set something up, so you know, how about we just dink around with that? Alright, I really have gotta fucking pay. Paris is defenseless against our assault, Lord Malak. They are offering no resistance. The city is in ruins. Resume the bombardment, Commander. Wipe this pathetic planet from the face of the galaxy.
Plot a course for Dantooine. There's a Jedi enclave there where we can find refuge. Incoming fighters! Quickly, to the gun turrets. You have to hold the Sith fighters off until we get those hyperspace coordinates punched in. So, Candorus. It's not what? Enough. This is a special case. Ah, yes. Now what? With the wreck. Come with. This should be. These'll be. If all. I must. I will. Okay, we're inside. No set. What? Yes? Sure. Yes?
What can I do? What can I do? What? Thank you. You have no idea. I don't have anything to give you as a reward for freeing me. Not I used to be the pilot of the Ebonhawk, Davik's flagship. I know the codes to disable the security system protect- You can use those codes to steal the Ebonhawk right out of its hangar. Sell it to the highest bidder. It won't be long until Davik figures- We've got what we came for.
Huh? I'm here. What? Sure. How dare you invade my chambers? How rude! I am a personal guest of Davik himself. How can Davik expect me to invest in his ventures with this kind of... What? Don't work with Davik. Then what... Plus, assassins... Damn no Sith, they're bombing the whole planet. I knew they'd turn on us sooner or... Wow, look what we got here. Thieves in a hangar. So, you figured you'd just steal my ship for your getaway and leave me high and dry while the Sith turn the planet into dust? Sorry, but that ain't gonna happen. I'll take care of them, Davik. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Make it quick, Carlo. The Sith mean business. If we don't get to our ships and find somewhere safe, the bombs there drop and will kill us all. Thermal detonator will blow us all to bits. Damn those shit! I bring this whole hangar down around our ears. Let's get this ship fired.
Karis is defenseless against our assault, Lord Malak. They are offering no resistance. The city is in ruins. Resume the bombardment, Commander. Wipe this pathetic planet from the face of the galaxy. Plot a course for Dantooine. There's a Jedi Enclave there where we can find refuge. Incoming fighters! Quickly, to the gun turrets. You have to hold the Sith fighters off until we get those hyperspace coordinates punched in. Safe? You saw what is even the Sith would think twice. We can get supplies here. Have you right? It isn't easy to She will find a way to now I must go speak with the council. I've spoken briefly with the council. They request an audience with you. An audience with the... I'm sorry. Well, I don't like being left out of the loop. Come, they're expect... Good day to you. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you at the moment. Good day to you. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you at the moment. I apologize. Good day to you. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you at the moment. I apologize.
Jin kin kun haku chikopa jino rundi hab. Kukumo Chica Dacom juice Dacom Achuta. You there, Padawan. Why are you not wearing the customary robes of the Jedi? Bastila? I have heard of her, but as for you, you claim you are not a... If this is some... No, I suppose you did not. Please forgive the abrupt... I wish you a pleasant stay here on... Waiting for you inside. Is it on now? <sighs> Drives me nuts. Drives me absolutely fucking nuts. I should. I, I, yeah. Yeah. It. Unfortunately, I have a button on the side of my fucking headset that mutes me. Ah, so you are the one who rescued Bastila. It is appropriate you are here. We have been discussing your rather special case. I am Jar, a member of the Jedi Council. With me are Master Vrook, Master Vandar, and of course the chronicler of our academy, Master Dorak. Padawan Bastila, I am sure you are already familiar with. This is no trap. The Council just wants to talk to you. Bastila tells us you are... Master Jars. Proof? Surely the... Perhaps it was simple. We both know there is no... The Jedi... So, 
Such pride, such arrogance. <laughs> As are many who are not given proper training, Master Vrook. Only through our guidance can we hope to lead those who have strayed back to the path of the light. Traditionally, the Jedi do not accept adults for training, though there are rare exceptions. I agree with Master Dorak. Many of our own pupils are leaving the Jedi Order. Are you certain, Revan? Is we should discuss this matter more. As you wish, Master Vandar. This morning's getting stranger. Well, Bastila did make. Well, I can't say I blame you. No, she didn't. You got it. What? All right. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. The Jedi got rid of Revan, so... Look. But I suppose that's why we need... So don't worry about me. Hey there. What... I'm sorry for the way I acted before. It's just that when it comes to... Le My brother and me had a good... She was a dancer at the canteen. But Lena was used to dating rich Therese. I'm not gonna pretend Griff wasn't a hustler and a con. I thought Lena would brush Griff off when she saw how poor he was, but for some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential. I saw Lena for what she really was. After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were gonna try and make their... He promised as soon as he made enough credits, he'd... Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she... I know I'll probably never... Don't worry. I won't let the sir. Okay. Hey there. What can I? Don't worry. Okay. Okay. You ready? What? Sure. Now, when we get a Tatooine. Good day to you. I I'm afraid I cannot speak to you at the moment. I apologize. Ku <laughs> I'm not doing shit until I get paid. Wish you a pleasant stay here on Dan. Look at that sweet little sexy twilight with their blue titties and their blue. 
blue pussy. Bastila has told us of a most unusual development. She claims you and she have... Sh These ruins have long been known to us. Bastila has described this shared dream to the Council in great detail. You and Bastila... Whatever danger... You and she are linked. But do not let your head be filled with visions of glory and power. So the way of the light is long and... Understand that there is little choice in this matter, for you or us. Across the galaxy, the Sith... Other Jedi have fallen... Perhaps our hope lies in the dream you and Bastil... Perhaps there you will find... The Force flows through you like no student we have ever seen. But you're willful and headstrong. Before we send you to investigate the ruins, you must be trained in the ways of the Jedi, so that you can resist the darkness within yourself, within all of us. Otherwise, you are doomed. We must begin your training at once. I can only hope you approve. The path you have chosen to walk is difficult. Intensive training will prepare you physically for the demands of the Order. Meditation will teach you to channel the power of the Force. To truly understand the way of the Jedi, you must open your mind to knowledge. Seek wisdom in the teachings of the great masters of our Order. A Jedi is never alone. Others in the Order will always stand by you. Now grab her you and Bastila share a special bond. Do not be afraid to turn to her when you need help in your training. The way of the Jedi is difficult. It requires great discipline. Yet even though you are a mere apprentice, your potential is unlimited. And your progress, amazing. In all my years, I have never seen one who has mastered the initial training so quickly. You have done in weeks what many cannot do in years. I am honored to welcome you fully into the Jedi Order. Soon your apprenticeship will end, and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first you must prove yourself worthy. In the traditions and cust... These tests will see if... First, I will t You must prove... Hmm. Greetings, my... Soon, in the tradi... These t First, you must now... There is... Um... Okay, there is... He said There least. is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. Uh, there is serenity. There is no chaos. There is... The light? That is not correct. There is no return. Greetings. Soon, in the tradition... These first, you must. There is. There is. There is no. There is no. That is not correct. There is no return. Greetings. Soon, in the tradition. The first, you must now prove you. There is no. There is. No, there is no path. There is no chaos. There is no death. You have learned your studies well, Apprentice. Okay. It will not be long before you are a full member of our order. But first, you must pass the second test and learn about the most prized possession. The lightsaber is... The blade is made of pure... And now it is your time.
Good evening, apprentice. I have faith that you will. Ah, you. The time. A Jedi is not restricted to a single color. Rather, that color is a badge of. But first, you should. Blue is the color. Yellow, green is the color of the Jedi. Clan. Yeah, and does he fuck this part up? Indeed, a woman and her small child are beset by a desperate-looking group of thugs. They're menacing her with weapons, and she screams to you for help. Hmm. Indeed. Very well. You are in combat with a dark Jedi allied with the Sith. There is a pause in the combat. Yes, I suspect. There is a lock. I am begin. You are the head of an enclave on a contested world. Yes, I thought. As I suspected, you would be. Which color and path? Here is a blue. Sure. The hell. Greetings, yeah. As a the Mandalorian. As. All right, maybe I'll go talk to my stupid fucking teacher again. Ah, good. Now that you. You have done extremely well in these crystals are very rare. There have even been un It is a room, but you must your lightsaber ident the Sith and Dark Jedi will seek to destroy you, apprentice. And you must prove yourself worthy in battle. Are you ready to face the fight? For every Jedi that even here on Dantu with the ancient grove, the Cath The Cath Hounds are but a symptom of I can say no more, but remember the dark side. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Ready? What? Sure. Take the bag. I think I want to have a mission replaced with Candorus. Yeah. Sure. Uh huh. What? Yes. The council's been telling us not to go near the council's been telling us not to go near the stones to the master quattro was hurt very badly she might die I heard it was her own apprentice that did it. Yeah, what are you? You want to hear tales? Of My name's Candorus of the Mandalorian clan Ordo. I've been fighting across the galaxy for 40 of your years. For my people, it is the honor and glory of battle that rules us. It's through comp. Times have changed now. The Mandalore clans have been scattered. The clans as they were are a threat, but the galaxy still. We only wanted the challenge of the... But now I have no real challenges. Crushing Davik's enemies and the pathetic gang... Um, it depends on if the Game of Thrones the writers can do what they did with Game of Thrones of seasons fought, 1 through killed, right the before the last heard, one, or are they going to just piss it all away? We will never again speak of this. We've got work to do, so let's... Yeah, what are you? From what we saw from space, this it looks like a farm work, but I might have you have any your tr Yes, what's in your mind? You got it. It is good sometime. I am sorry. I tend to get carried away. Is there something? Indeed. The council has told... Then it would not be m But as the light side can... The grow... Is there... I hope you're... Greetings, friend. I think... Oh, does the council... The... How may I... My name is... A pleasure. Live on one of the nor... Recently, those men... He should have been protecting her better if he wanted... Mandalorian beast. Some of us don't like fighting and killing. I'm not sure exactly what... Is there anything... Ever since the Republic beat them years ago. They're pathetic. They're taking scraps when they should be taking worlds. With the Sith invasion, the Republic doesn't... The Jedi, they're wary. Is there anything else? Farewell, then. Are you a Jedi? How long can you... Protectors! Ha! You... Those Mandalorian brutes have killed my... You should have protected her better. And you call yourself her father. And what am I supposed to do against a dozen Mandalorians and Duros? Nothing. They came to our land demanding our livelihood. But Ilsa... There was nothing I could do. 
too many of the Mandalorians. I've come here to ask you, please, Master Jedi, stop these ra- I will give you all I have. Just... Alright, let's go killing. Oh yeah, the woman who has sex with her droid. We were working on my phone. I heard the I searched everywhere and maybe it was the Mandalorians. Or maybe cat cat hounds are not intelligent. No. It must No. The... Well, yes it could have. But he had no reason to run away. Well, Yes, but he is very valuable to me all the same. He's the last... He is very dear to me, my precious is. I don't know what... He's the only companionship... He is a personal assistance droid. My husband was a... Yep, she's getting fucked by that droid. This one, capable of taking care of me for the rest of... As the last legacy of my husband, for my own personal ease of mind, I need him back. His absence gnaws at me. Wow, she really needs. Please, I beg. Thank you. Would you have any chewy? Baba, she what? She what? Oh, she what? Would you have? Baba. Yes? Uh-huh. Why? Alright, it wasn't that suit. Anyway, um, we're gonna go party selection, remove, add, okay, boom this, boom that. Sure. Hungry.
The metallies or the whatever the hell. All right, I'm gonna pee. I'll be back for. A, I'll be back in a minute. I'm probably gonna kill the uh, games portion of this because it's not working out too well. And I'll do some videos. Stick around, everybody. I'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Yeah, um... Uh, this is the Metali Grounds or the Sandal Grounds? I don't know. Metali. Well, I'm going to save here. And... I'm going to do some videos, I guess. I went in for two hours. It's long enough. Okay, let's see what the young Turks have done. This weekend was the second woman's Shut up. I don't know what to do. I know the progressive boy. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to respond to his video. Hi. <laughs> oh, we're about to have so much fun together. All right, look. We all have... All right, I'm going to jack up uh, the audio on this uh, video. All right, should be good. Guilty pleasures. And my guilty pleasure is the TMZ of progressives, the progressive voice. Joining me now is the... Yeah, he's usually wrong, too. Just not for nothing host and creator of that YouTube show, Sahil Habibi. Sahil, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, of course, of course. All right, so I want to have some... You know, what I can't stand about Anna is... You know, it's like last night, I, I do remember I, I got into a pretty big argument with, with Phoenix Rising. You know, it's like, I don't... I hate this. You know, I, I, I fucking hate the circle jerk. So anyway, uh, you know, I always want conflicting opinions to mine. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm not so con if I'm not so quick on my goddamn uh, video game thing. Well, I'm trying to actually win a goddamn game. Anyway, um, let's get back into this and the Young Turk circle jerk. And I, I've seen this fucking asshole before. Fun. Uh, I want to talk about... Every time he's in a debate, he gets destroyed, by the way. What you do and, and how you came to do what you do. Uh, but before we do it, I do want to ask you a question that's been on my mind ever since I came across your show. And you don't have to answer it if you're uncomfortable with this. But, like, how old are you? Uh, I'm 19. I just turned 19 That's a incredible. Weeks ago. That's incredible. So... I do really enjoy your show because of a number of different reasons. So I, I got hooked on it because of the junk food. But you actually have some really great political instincts. And you do some political commentary in addition to some of the gossip in progressive circles. So I want to show one of the videos that I thought was was pretty good because you're on the money in your commentary here. Really Let's take a look. Online commentator. Of who in the progressive sphere, they're trying to like out, they're trying to like out progressive slash, uh, you know, rebel each other. It's weird. It's like Jimmy Dore's trying to do that with TYT. There's other smaller creators. Yeah, um, the American people don't want it, you stupid, dumb son of a bitch. Domino assume by the inflection in your voice, you are really an American. We don't want it. The country's right of center. 
developers that are sort of under the Jimmy Dore protege umbrella that are doing the same thing. And it's just kind of weird oh, thing. Shit, and then it ends up being like, oh, video. then once that person takes over that role, then someone usurps them in that role. It's weird. It's like this kind of chain reaction that goes on. It's kind of weird uh, to see. But see, there seems to be this weird obsession with like out rebelling the other YouTube channel. It's weird. So, Sahil, I've noticed the exact same thing. Oh my God! Okay, she wants this young nineteen-year-old cock in her pussy because it's the first time she's probably been able to come in a while because he can actually go the distance. Okay, why why are we taking the opinions of a nineteen-year-old seriously? Thing on, uh, you know various progressive shows, which is strange because this is a great time for progressives to kind of band together and push for uh, the right candidate in. Yeah, because you're a failing movement that is dying rapidly. The Democratic prime. You know, I'm slight right of center, believe it or not. I'm slight right of center. Now, the problem is the left has gone so far left that I may as well just fucking say I'm a card-carrying Republican. Because none of what they advocate for, at least at the moment, resonates with me. You know, I have deep, deep divides with the conservatives. Uh, whatever, let's get back into this. Hi, Marys. Uh, but no one really talks about it, and no one really puts it out there as clearly as you did in that video. All right, you want to you want to suck his little 19-year-old dick. Yo. Yeah, so, you know, as I said in the video, I just feel like there seems to be just a continuous spiral of that. Kind of saw that with Jimmy Dore and how he was sort of uh acting towards TYT and his thoughts on TYT and then there are other sort of smaller lefty creators. Did Dore lead TYT? Did Jimmy Dore lead TYT? Yeah, if he did, good for him. Leaders who are kind of doing the same thing, and then you know bring Tulsi Gabbard into the mix, and there always seems to be an attempt. Oh yes, because you progressive cocksuckers like to think Tulsi Gabbard is a goddamn right wing operative when she is probably the best person to beat Trump. Nobody likes your extreme leftist ideology, faggot! To kind of out left uh, whoever the current person is. And it just seems to be something that's going on. And I think sometimes there are right times to do critiques of certain people who maybe, I don't know, aren't left enough, you could say. Yeah. But I just feel like, I don't know, it just seems to be happening. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, because your party has gone insane, my boy. How about this? How about you take, how about this progressive voice? How about you face the Lord of Patriarchy? I'm happy to scar up that fresh little face a little bit. Anyway, I'm done with this video. Uh, let's go to another one. Uh, didn't really have a plan for this, but whatever the fuck. Uh... Let's go with Bill Maher versus White Shame. Save big money on your fall home God improvement damn it. projects. Now during Menard's Oktoberfest sale. Right now all bought. And finally, new rule. White liberals have to start listening to me when I tell them you can't be more offended than the victim. <laughs> all right, that's Bill Maher calling out individuals who- You gotta be kidding me. Maher attacks people with human compassion. No, he's telling people to stop feeling guilty over shit they had nothing to fucking do with. I feel no sympathy to a black person who says, your ancestors enslaved me. Okay, they probably did, but that has nothing to do with me. We're upset. And by the way, Anna, the only reason you're on this show is your perky little tits and the fact that you don't work the show naked speaks volumes. With Andrew Yang after he defended Shane Gillis, uh, an SNL comic who was uh, fired after he was very briefly hired. Um, 
because he had put out some questionable stuff on a pop. Yeah, fucking eight years ago, you dumb cunt. You know, if there's anyone I want to strangle in this world, if, if, if there's anyone I want to actually, like, destroy and, like, actually have a, want a physical confrontation with, if the Young Turks is at the top of that list. Podcast. Um, I want to I wanna have Cenk Uger in Hell in a Cell. With Anna's right to wear clothes at stake. Misogynistic stuff and, you know. And, and, and she can spend the rest of her days walking around in her goddamn fours at, at my heel on a dog leash. My Asian stuff. And so, you know, Andrew Yang was like, yo, I don't think that they should have fired him. That wasn't a good idea. And then people were angry at Yang over his comments. And so Bill Maher uh, put out a segment calling out uh, these people who were upset with Yang. And I want to show you a part of that clip. Take a look. There was a study done last year where people were asked to rate their feelings about various races, and white liberals were the only group that has a bias against themselves. <laughs> they want to hang out only with people who are not them. That's like your mother preferring the neighbor's kids. There is a <laughs> weird self-loathing going on among white liberals, and it's not helping anyone lifting up those whose society has cheated or forsaken, that's liberalism. Hating all things white is just tedious virtue signaling. The answer to mass incarceration is to stop putting undeserving blacks in prison, not to put more white people in Twitter jail. Okay, so we'll do a little critique in a minute, but I, I wanna just put out. Okay, you cut out a lot of that, but whatever. What I because I've seen the Bill Maher monologue. Uh, she cut out a lot of it, but agree whatever. with uh, with Maher on. So, yeah, like people who are upset at Andrew Yang over H Yang not being offended by Gillis's statements. Like, do you understand how absurd that is? Like, Andrew Yang is Asian, and yeah. But here's the thing, though, you dumb, stupid cunt. Um, according to you people, Asians are not oppressed because Asians outperform everyone on the ACTs. And you're mad at him for not being offended enough towards Shane Gillis. So like, everyone relax for a second. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, so and Mar uh, it had some other- No, this is what you want. This is what you fucking want, you cunts. They're absurd examples, and those examples are right. And, and, and personally, if I have one goal in life, it's I want to see the young turks burnt to the ground. I want to walk on their stage and end their damn show. In their uh, outlandishness. Absurdity. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's this one's more nuanced, right? Now, having said that, uh, I, and I and I agree with Andrew Yang, and I agree that you shouldn't yell at Andrew Yang. <laughs> so let me get that out of the way. But because someone is Asian doesn't mean that I, they speak I, for I, all Asian people. And Andrew, I I I want I, I, I would give my left ball to buy their show. Tell them, hey, at some point a surprise is going to happen. Keep doing your show as normal, and then during the live stream, walk on and say you're fucking done. Get out! You would agree with that, right? So uh, if he's not offended, that's good, but that doesn't mean other Asian people can't be offended. And it doesn't mean that white progressive. It doesn't matter if you're offended or not. I don't give a fuck how many people are offended. It doesn't fucking matter. Get over it. You're offended. Who fucking cares? Can't also say, hey, I didn't agree with that, even though one Asian guy said it was okay. For example, if Candace. Uh, oh my God, really? Well, Anna should be deeply offended by the fact that you call yourself the Young Turks, although she's an Armenian sellout, uh, because, you know, the whole name, the Young Turks. We're the group of people that killed a bunch of Armenian motherfuckers. 
Now, granted, they did this about a century ago. Uh, this is, but again, it, it, shut the fuck up. If he's not offended, he's not offended. Who care? And, and, and fully more, who gives a shit if somebody's offended? Who cares? Owen says something that's racist is okay and she's black. That doesn't mean I can't criticize it because we found one African American in the country who says it's okay. Right Now, I don't know that Andrew Yang's position is the majority or the minority among Asians in this country. We didn't poll. Uh, well, let's see. 90% of Amer Native Americans don't really give a rat's ass about the name Redskins. In fact, it's 91 or 92. If I had to take a poll, an honest poll of black Americans, and if they think something is racist, they don't care. Most black Americans that I've talked to, most of my black friends, laugh their ass off that Tom and Jerry has to have a racist warning label now. In fact, one of them, who, who's, a, who's a guy that is into music, is like, well, wait a second. Dur during Tom and Jerry, she was doing Jitterbug. That was what black people were doing at the time. I mean, yes, it got a, a racist connotation, you know, in like the 60s. These are not my words. These are his. You know, it, it got a racist, but, but in, the, in the context of the cartoon, she's doing Jitterbug. That's a black person's dance. How is that racist? Again, not my words. His. Who's a black guy? The, 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 the problem is, is it doesn't matter. If you have a woman who stands against feminism, then she's a fucking anti-feminist idiot who just must love cock. If you have a black guy like Candace Owens or a black woman like Candace Owens who stands against this notion that black people are oppressed, well, she's just sucking the dick of her white patriarchal masters. You always have this fucking excuse. Here's a thought. Maybe, just maybe, nobody's oppressed. Everybody has the same opportunity. Anyway, let's go on. Right? right, but other progressives are allowed to be upset at things that Andrew isn't upset at because they're different people. Yeah. Oh, but other conservatives are allowed to be upset at something that might not piss off another conservative. Or are or should conservatives just shut the fuck up? For example. I got to be honest, I think the way Andrew Yang handled this whole Shane Gillis thing was pretty good. I right? agree. So the first uh, thing that Andrew Yang did was put out a tweet saying, you know, I don't really like. I'm How many gallons of cum have you swallowed, Anna? Obviously, I'm paraphrasing. I don't have his tweet in front of me, but I don't really like comedy that punches down. But I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about it. Like he wanted to have. Mm. And if I punch down on President Trump, or if I punch down on Middle America, or if I punch down on West Virginia, or if I punch down on any conservative in general, you wouldn't care. Shut the fuck up, you elitist cunt. Have a discussion. I um, love that. And I think that, that there's value in that, right? There's value in having a conversation with people. And Shut up. It's a joke. Fuck off. I'm done. You stupid fucking cunt. Hope you die. Okay, let me. Let's see if Greta Thunberg's done anything lately. Thunberg, Thunberg, whatever. Well, I'll uh, I'll just redo this. Uh, John and I created Freight Farms to empower local food production through design and innovation. We want to help anyone grow food anywhere. I think I may have done this last night, but I really don't care.
I just want to rip her apart again. So I don't care. <laughs> you have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. Wait a second. I got to see. Um, are we? Okay, we are good. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. My message is that we'll be watching you. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. I don't care. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the yes. other side of the ocean. Yes, you should! Yet you all come to us young people. No! No! You should be! Your parents should have told you to fuck off! Honestly, honestly, Greta, if you were my little girl, I would have said, Greta, you're my daughter. I love you. But I'm not giving up ribeye steak. Fuck you. And she's 16, she could have handled that from her dad. I'd have said, I love you, but I'm not giving up who I am. And that means eating cows. I don't give a shit about the planet. It's time for her parents to have a set of balls and fucking say, Greta, you need to go to school. You need to quit worrying about it. Or I would have told her my own history. I honestly wish I knew, the, knew this girl before she became a big thing. I'd have told her my history. With my sixth grade science teacher that had us all fucking nuts with echo bullshit and how we're all going to be dead by now. Right now, according to him, we should be in a radiated hellscape. And we're not. So no, her parents need to have a set of balls. I just said, go get your ass to school if you really want to change the world. Become the next fucking climate scientist or or energy scientist or whatever the fuck. But I'm also not giving up steak, sweetheart. Yeah, she got her parents to go vegan. For hope, how dare you? You have stolen my... How dare I? I dare anything! I am the Lord of Patriarchy! My dreams and my childhood with your empty words. No, I haven't, sweetheart. You've allowed yourself to have your childhood stolen. And your parents have done nothing to stop it. Like I said, climate change is a nightmare. It's your parents' job to pat your little head, wipe away tears, maybe take you into their bed, but to let you know that the nightmare is that just that. It's fiction. And that's all it is. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. No, you're not. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. I've heard this shit 30 years beforehand, Greta! Remember, we were the first generation of Echo Kids! I've heard this shit before! You know, it's like, I, I want to be mean to her, but I, I just, I can't because I, I see the same shit. I could have been her. You know, it's, it's like, like last night where I just, I couldn't bring myself to, to be mean to Resonator Zen because it's like, I've been down his road. I've been down the path of, of feeling sorry for myself and, and not wanting to do anything and, 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 and looking for every excuse just to give up. And I didn't. I chose fuck it. I just, I hate this. I hate this. How did this fucking defeatist mentality... How did this defeatist mentality 
pervade the West. You know, somebody once brought up, is the West going to fall? If the West falls, it's going to be this defeatist mentality. I just, I, I don't understand people that won't stand and fight. I, I, I don't. I, I don't get it. And I've been down the road that she's been on, and I've been down the road that Resonator Zen's been on. I've been down this dark road, and I know where it leads. You have to get up and fight. And... Whining and bitching to the UN isn't going to do a goddamn thing. The problem with Greta is, the problem with Greta is, is she wants the impossible. She wants the world to shut down and go Amish. Well, we're not going to do that. No, Phoenix Rising, it is defeatist. It is defeatist. Anyway, let's listen to a little more of her speech. You know, and I, I, I can understand why you might think that. Because you're defeatist. Resident Evil Zen's defeatist. Uh, a- a- anyone who typically sides with you is defeatist. You know, you 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 constantly claim how how horrible life is for you. Well, fucking kick life in the balls and fucking tell him to suck your goddamn dick. Or or in your case, I, I will say clit. <laughs> but take life by the horns. You know. And yeah, are you gonna have to work hard? Yeah. You know, anyway, let's let's get back to our speech. I, I don't want to get into a thing here. Saying we can't do anything is defeatist. Saying let's get off our asses and change things for the better is the opposite of that. The problem is, is that that is the battle cry of your side, Phoenix. That's the battle cry of your side. Why are you poor? Well, no matter what I do, everything is... That's the battle cry of Resident Evil Zen. That's the battle cry of you. The videos I've seen from you have led me to believe that you're just a defeatist. That you think you're fucked before you begin. Do you want to be on my side? I'm happy to have you on my side. You know, but you have to have the courage to stand up against life itself Flip it the fucking bird and say, fuck you, I'm doing it. Anyway, I'm going to get back to her goddamn speech. I don't want to give a goddamn inspirational speech right now. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. No, we're All not. We talk about is money and fa- Well, yeah, because the money's kind of important. Fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? I dare anything! I am the Lord of Patriarchy! For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. Uh, yeah, if you go back 31 years, we're going to be at global, global cooling. And again, I've been alive for most of those 30 fucking years, sweetheart. In fact, I was at the start of it. And right now, we are supposed to be living in an irradiated hellscape. That didn't fucking happen. That's why I'm sorry if I press X to doubt on your claims. Also, we have the sun going into a dormant phase, along with the fact that the sun is actually getting brighter. So, maybe, just maybe, our climate is 
kind of dictated by that big ball of death in the sky called the sun. <laughs> Greta, here's my hope for you, little girl. Give this up. Give your activism up. Seriously, give it up. Leave it alone. You're not rational enough to deal with it. You won't have a debate with anyone who disagrees with you. Go home. Go back to Sweden. Find a nice Swedish boy. Fall in love with him. And have babies. That is my advice to you. You won't have a debate. We're not going to let you dictate shit to us. Have kids. And your parents are fucking evil monsters. Because they let you drop out of school. To gallivant around the world. And do this. When it will mean nothing. At the end of the day. I know she can't actually hear me, Phoenix. But I'm hoping she hears the message. I'm also on the live stream. Oh, and she's still smarter than me. Hmm. Okay. She didn't address the fact that in the 90s, we were more worried about the ozone layer and we were supposed to be in a radiated hellscape. She won't deal with the fact that before that, we were more worried about global cooling. She won't worry about the fact that in the 50s, we were more worried about the atomic bombs we tested destroying the goddamn environment. Uh, let's... Sorry? Um... Look, the one thing that can, can destroy us is the sun. That's it. And that's all. That great big ball of fucking death in the sky. Oh, who cares about the past? Really, nothing can be learned from history. Okay. Fuck it. Let Trump set up the LGBTQ uh, concentration camps then. Even though he wouldn't. You know, Phoenix, I don't know if you're trying to bait me into one other debate. If you want, we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, except the science has changed before. It'll change again. And honestly, if 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 we're at the doomsday level that Greta says we are, we're fucked! It doesn't matter! Nothing matters! <laughs> We're not doing a very good job of mocking me, Phoenix. Again. You know what? Fuck it. I really don't give a shit. Um, Phoenix, you want to come on? It's not for nothing. I mean, you know what? I I I I won't feel bad. I don't care. You you know I've been drinking. So, Phoenix, if you want to come on, now's the fucking time. All right, let's go. Uh, what do we want to do here? Uh, shit. 
Who do we want to go after on YouTube today? You know what? Let's let's check out uh, John Sakars. I haven't checked him out. I should check out the Amazing Atheist. I haven't checked him out. Eh, whatever. Let's uh, let's check out John Sakars. Hello, my friends, I'm Man. Okay, we'll deal with this. He masked radical change. Okay. Wait, where the fuck is... Okay, hold on. Friends, Amanda. Finish, you're more than welcome to come on here. What the fuck? Why is my so why is my system so weird at this? Anyway, let's get up to him. Um This is mass radical change. Alright, Phoenix. I will. Second I get done with him. Margaret Sinclair is a fellow activist and a poet, and I said to Amanda, would you like to collaborate on a song with me sometime? And she said, sure. Then, on September 16th, she wrote a post, and I found it very powerful, and I thought to myself, wow, this is a song right here. So I said, hey, Amanda, do you mind if I use your post as lyrics for a song? And she said, sure. Then she said, maybe the song will help people see the climate emergency from a more personal perspective. So thank you very much, Amanda, for everything you do to make the world a better place. Here is your post in the form of a song. I didn't change any of your... Um, I also love the fact that now John is goddamn nearly completely white. And I, who am about the same age as him, am still colored, I guess. Your words at all. I didn't add any words or take any away. This is the whole post. So, I hope you like it, Amanda, and everyone, become a post-capitalist and a vegan, and speak out against all oppression. Thank you very much. Green hair since you were 12, that's a problem with your diet. What I want is mass. Or stop being vegan. How am I supposed to plan for my future? Or even take the prospect of my future seriously when I know we are headed for a mass extinction. Um, because it's not gonna fucking happen. I've heard this line before. I've heard this line again. I have news for you. It's bullshit. It doesn't matter, Amanda. Be happy. Have babies. Be a mom. I cannot focus in. And honestly, if it is, if you are right and we are fucked, well, then I'll happily walk hand in hand with you through the gates of hell together. School, I don't care about personal projects. 
I feel like there is pressure to remain optimistic But I just want to be real for a second I do not feel optimistic That the necessary systemic and individual changes will be made no because what you're asking for is asking for us to revert back to 1863 all uh well i have news for you phoenix rising you'd be much better off if you became a mommy find a good guy find a guy who'll take care of you be a fucking mom I can think about is the crisis we are in and the and considering birth rates are plummeting and American women are increasingly finding themselves miserable single cat ladies hey maybe feminism fucking failed actually believe it or not Phoenix Yes, you are. Do you know how I know this? The way you talked to me when I was drunk. If you weren't the mom type, you wouldn't have done this. And, I mean, I, I, I don't want to butter you up, but it's the truth. I've always told the truth. You acted, you, you, you've acted very mom-like with me. Just saying. No, there's a mom in you. There's a mom in you, Phoenix. And honestly, honestly... I think you'd be a good mom. I honestly hope your first child is a is a boy. <laughs> but I think you'd be a good mom. You underestimate yourself, Phoenix. And that's and that's what I hate. I, I also hate people underestimating themselves. The horrific conditions that led us here. Look, Phoenix. Look, we, we've had our history. <sighs> Look. Well, it, whatever. Look, I know what I know. I, I I would advise you to reconsider. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, let's get back. To this. Radical change. What I want is mass radical change. As long as, as long as Zephyr, that's at least what I got out of it, uh, can scream at the moon in the warrior spirit, I honor his name. And I'm not nagging you, Phoenix. I don't give a damn what you do in truth, but I'm telling you, you're going to regret this. I'm just saying that. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, let's get back to this stupid little vegan soy boy faggot. The ignorance 
The selfishness, the domination, the exploitation, the subjugation of so many. I am sad about all of it, and I feel tired. I just started a new semester, and I cannot bring myself to do any um, I would like to point out that if you had my smoked chicken, that chicken who gave its life to be on my goddamn smoker had a better life in, enjoyed by the humans at the table. That's how good my smoked chicken is. I no longer have the ability to imagine the future. So trying to build a career in all of this feels incredibly futile. Oh, what a shock. A millennial giving up at the first sight of problems. What a fucking shock. I don't want reassurance that things will be okay. I don't want positivity. What I want is change. Mass radical change. Okay, um, what would you like, sweetheart? Because everything you're going to propose we change, I have a very real problem with doing you know, to have our way of life. I think that's about the end of this. He read through it. Chickens are food. They're not my friends. And believe it or not, I used to help raise chickens on a farm. And then I'd kill them myself. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's see what now this is doing. I really do have to pee. All right, let's see this story. He said, religion, we don't want that here. He said, religion, we don't want that here. And Okay. If he kept the same standard with crucifixes or stars of David, he has a point. Now, if he allowed crucifixes or stars of David to be worn under, let's say, female employees' blouses, you have a claim. So, okay. And then he pointed to my headscarf. Okay. Again. I am, I, 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 I want to see this woman's, I'm going to go pee, but I want to see if this woman can point where he said, a Star of David or a crucifix is fine underneath the blouse. If that's the case, I am totally on her side. If that is not the case, then she can fuck off. And yes, and yes, I do get this petty with this shit. Where, yeah, if you're going to let a woman wear a crucifix around her neck, even under her blouse... Um, you know, or, or I take it back. Maybe, maybe openly. Maybe if you're going to let somebody wear a crucifix openly, then you have to let the Muslim bitch wear her fucking stupid dumb headscarf. 
And yes, it's fucking retarded. But I'm going to be back. I'll deal with this video. I'm very, I'm very curious if this guy let somebody wear a crucifix openly. Now, yes, the headscarf is a little... I'll, if it was hidden... Well, I'm sorry, Muslims, but our laws just don't jive with your bullshit. Fuck off. There is no difference between gender and I... What the fuck? There's a difference between sexual and gender identity? No, there's not. I'm a straight male. I'm male. I want to fuck women. Most women are women who want to fuck men. There are women that want to fuck other women. And there are guys that want to fuck other guys exclusively. And then there are some of us who want to fuck everyone. That's it. You got... Four classifications. Straight, bi, lesbian, or straight, gay, lesbian, bi. That's it. Anyway. And apparently this particular Muslim woman was, uh, so she says she was fired from her, let me see the, okay, good, fired from her job uh, for taking a prayer break. Gender's binary, Phoenix, sorry, there's men, there's women. Yes, there's the 1% that somehow are born with both parts, but usually one of the two is dominant. Okay, we're going to find out if she was fired for requesting a prayer break. Now, does the job allow for that? Do they have things like smoke breaks? Or, 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 uh, whatever breaks. 
because you know uh, all right let's let's just get into this Every okay i'm sorry but why should a company have to bend the knee because Muslims have to pray five or six, seven times a day? Fuck you. Everything was going well. It lasted about 15, 20 minutes. And then she explained to me um, the, the roles, the hours, um, how to progress within the company. And um, she said that there would be a two hour lunch break, uh, to which I said, uh, that's kind of a long lunch break, but is it possible for me to take a shorter lunch break and instead take five minutes throughout the day to pray? And I asked her for two uh, five minute prayer breaks, which would amount to 10 minutes total, um, uh, because I pray five times a day um, in accordance with my sincerely held religious beliefs. Yeah, well, I'm sorry if that's not the way the company works then tough fucking titty for you. Your God ends when you punch in. Sorry. Your God ends there. And um, she promptly ended the interview. She said, that's not going to work. We have fixed hours here. Were you hired? Were you hired by them or no? As we were walking back to the office, I thought, why don't I talk to somebody else in charge? Uh, maybe they'll be able to help me out. So we uh, we were at the front desk in the office, and the CEO, Ramses Gavilondo, he was at the front desk. The assistant manager, she handed him my resume, and uh, she said the hours don't work for her. And it was kind of like he already started looking over my paper and marking stuff up. So I quickly um, asked him that, do you think you can accommodate my five-minute prayer breaks? And instead, I'm willing to take a shorter lunch break. And he said, what? And I, I repeated myself very calmly. I thought he just simply didn't understand. But the way he was asking me, the way he said what? You weren't even the fucking hired there! Yeah! If I ran the company, like, I'm an atheist! And if I had to deal with your religious bullshit, no, I'm not gonna fucking hire you! Fuck off! was also very condescending and I said well because of my religion I have to pray five times a day and two of those prayers are gonna happen within the um, within the hours of, of the work that you guys told me because it was from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. I believe and I would have at least two to three prayers that I would have to pray so I asked him can you guys accommodate me and I'm willing to take a shorter lunch break and he said religion we don't want that here and then he pointed to my headscarf um, and he was making all sorts of like hand movements yeah, I would have done the same thing. I'm mean, like, no, sweetie, I'm your boss. I'm an atheist. I want to burn all that shit down. I want you to remove your head scarf. Because God doesn't fucking exist. But since I hadn't hired her in the first place... All I would have to say to win the case is, well, I found somebody better. No, it's not. I'm not going to fucking have my business dictated by the religious needs of some son of a bitch. Movements and be becoming very loud. And I was because if we go down that road, walk or uh, Phoenix. Then a Christian could say, I can't have gays working in my department because it goes against my religious beliefs. Or I can't have people out of wedlock who have children because it goes against my religious beliefs. You see, you, you see how you quickly start to give a shit? Either, 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 Phoenix, either, Phoenix, you have two choices in this matter. Either A, she could, should have gotten the job on religious grounds, or B, Master Big Cake Shop had every right to refuse service to the gay couple. Make up your fucking mind. It's one or the goddamn other. 
was still like calm. I was just trying to explain to him the situation. And he was just like, religion, we don't want that here. We don't want these religious shenanigans here. I was shocked. Um, and there were other people. Um, he had every right not to hire you. I wouldn't have hired you. Because I don't want you dicking around, taking away from my productivity to do your stupid little prayers to God. You know, I'm sorry, but I have the right not to hire you. You have the right not to give me service because I'm a fucking heathen. Or an infidel or whatever the fuck you Muslim fuckers call me. And Christian bakers have the right not to fucking make a faggot wedding cake. How's that? Doesn't matter. Doesn't fucking matter, Phoenix. I don't care. Your religion ends when you punch in. Your religion ends when you punch in. People around me, there were other employees, there were other... Also, again, Phoenix, would you defend the Christian baker's right not to bake a gay wedding cake? The answer is, of course you won't. Because... Islam is higher on the oppression Olympics. You can't have it both ways. That's not how it works in the U.S. Freedom from religion can't exist without freedom of religion. Yes, everyone is free to do whatever religion they want. But if your religion means that you can't do your job, then either A, you give up your religion, or you give up your fucking job. Oh, so... Wait a second, if a couple of gay people want to walk into a Christian bakery and want a wedding cake, then the Christian baker is just fine. But if a couple of gay people walk into a Muslim bakery and they don't want to do the cake for the exact same reason, your answer is nothing because that actually fucking happened. And no, I don't care. I have set up the break times for my employees. They can use them as they see fit. If that conflicts with your prayer schedule, find another fucking job. I don't care. How's that? Uh, interview is there, and I just felt very humiliated. He made some X's on my paper, on my resume. And um, that was it. I just kind of quietly left the office. Um, I didn't want to create a scene or anything. Oh, well, maybe because you suck. Or maybe because you're believing in a phony baloney god that doesn't exist. But I was, um, I was pretty hurt and pretty embarrassed. You're lucky you didn't have me on there. I'd make all my employees take an oath to forsake God. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act prohibits employers from discriminating against individuals on the basis of religion and other protected classes. Um, he didn't. He said that her prayer breaks would influ would directly impact the working day. If his working day is let's let let's say he's he's like me, like let's say if, if I had YouTube as a business. And I take a break at between noon and two, but the other hours I'm filming, well, sorry, bitch, I can't accommodate you. I need you here. I didn't discriminate. 
her religious lifestyle conflicts with my business. Fuck off, you dumb blonde cunt. And moreover, employers are required to accommodate applicants and employees um, with regards to their sincerely held religious beliefs as long as that does not pose an undue burden on their office operations. Two five minutes. Um, her not working does exactly that. Fuck off. Prayer breaks don't pose any type of burden on an employer. Um, according to you. Those and you're some dumb young lawyer that doesn't know shit. Breaks can be taken in a private area um, without disturbing any. This is why I wouldn't hire, hire a Muslim in the first place. Anyone they can. And anyone I thought was a Muslim, I, I'd have just thrown their resume in the trash. Be taken on the side. They're predetermined, and so she would. No, she doesn't get. Okay, fine. Fuck it. Then uh, smoke breaks. Then. Uh, I need, I, I need to go take porn breaks, um, y do you know how stupid this sounds? No, at what time she was required to take those breaks. Ten minutes, uh, can you answer that? How exactly does that impact the workday? Can you answer that? How? Still waiting, how? We know you're garbage. Okay. Okay. Let's say I have a business. And let's say this business is 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 YouTube. Let's say we film from eight to noon and then let's say two to two to six for an eight hour day. Now between the hours of eight to noon and two to six, I need everyone on deck, and I need everyone doing their absolute best, and I need everyone. That I need to have everyone have their focus on what the content that we are producing. Now, during the noon to two break, I don't give a rat's ass what people do, but it will fuck my product over if. Somebody like this woman has to go out and di dick around with a 10 minute prayer break to pray to a God who doesn't fucking exist. Because, uh, well, it's uh, 3 o'clock or 1 o'clock or whatever. I gave her a two hour break. Get your goddamn prayers to God in during then. I'm not going to dictate my schedule. Because of your fucking religious bullshit. Does that explain it to you? That That's my reasonable response. I'm not going to have... I gave her two hours in the middle of the day to do whatever the fuck she wants. I'm not going to have my goddamn day dictated by a fucking phony baloney man in the sky. Because sincerely held religious beliefs could mean goddamn near anything under our laws. The problem is, Phoenix, is because, like I dictated, if they are intense in those four hours, you take the two hours, then another four hours. If they're intense in that, yes. Ten minutes can mean the fucking world. Sorry, not all companies are like, you know. That if, if I ran a YouTube company, yeah, ten minutes would mean death to me. Or it's like, oh, where the fuck is she? Oh, she's on a prayer break. I don't fucking care. I'll butt fuck her God when I get to hell.
You're not getting it, Phoenix. It's the time. It's the times. Okay, let's say you run a business. You start at 8 o'clock and you work till noon. Everybody goes away for two hours and you come back at 2 and you work to 6. Okay? The problem is that your business is set up where everyone is working from 8 to noon and then 2 to 6. You need everyone there. You cannot afford some son of a bitch to be off on a prayer break at, let's say, 1 o'clock. Or no, I take the back. You can't be off on some son of a bitch being off on a prayer break at 10 o'clock. If that doesn't jive with your company's policies, fuck her. She can get another job somewhere else. Do you understand that? Do you know that? Okay? If you worked for me and I say, hey, around here, we work from 8 to noon. Then at noon, we all go on a midday break, and I want you back here at 2. And then from 2 to 6, we work our asses off. Okay, I can't have you fucking off at 4 o'clock because your imaginary god demands you pray to him. It doesn't matter. It's the time. It's 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 the fucking time. It, it doesn't matter, Phoenix. She can get another job. There's a million other jobs out there. She wanted to be a little cunt and get her name in the news. Um, Fast Track has absolutely no basis for what they did, and they were... Yes, they did. Again, if it was my company, I'd say, look, this is the way we roll here. If it's without our purview to pray, I don't fucking care. All right, I went back to the video. Let's go back to more of them. Friend Amanda Margaret Sinclair is a fellow activist and a poet. And I said to... Oh, son of a bitch. All right. It's iPhone season, it's sprint. Switching at the, the new, new iPhone right, 11 or iPhone 11 Pro with amazing all new camera systems. And now you can get iPhone 11 for zero dollars a month when you trade in your iPhone 7 or newer in any condition. All right, so we'll see what this failed piece of shit actor is. You know what? No, I, I, I take the bag. I'm going to hold up. I'm going to close this. I'm going to open up a new window. All right, Phoenix. Okay, I'm not getting you. I, I tried. What? Give me the link. What do you want me to respond to? I, I can't find you.
Sorry, sweetheart. I don't know why you two is buried, yeah, but... Give me the, give me, put the link in the description below. And yes, I did call him a failed actor. When was his last good movie? Same thing as I'll, I'll say Al Pacino was a failed actor. Well, I get that, Phoenix, but <sighs> let me try Twitter. I didn't get her on that. But uh, I, get, I, get, I get that. Um, but do me a favor, Phoenix. You want me to respond to something? Um... I need I need I need a goddamn video link if you please I'm sorry I I I typed your goddamn exact uh username into this motherfucker I got nothing please give me the goddamn video link What do you want me to respond to Uh, no link popped up in the chat. Look, Phoenix, you know my goddamn... You know my goddamn email. Just put the put the fucking link in the goddamn chat. All right. Find your channel at least. All right, we'll see your video. Why I call myself queer, part one. I got slurred speech right here. This is against me. Whatever. At the conclusion of Steven Universe's Garbage and Here's Why, I made this remark about the LGBT spectrum. This is applicable toward, well, really anybody who falls under the LGBT spectrum. Is it a spectrum? 
I'm gonna say it is, because this doesn't fit into spoken dialogue very well, and this is a slur, and fuck that noise. This would in any- Okay. There are a few sexual orientation possibilities. Either A, if you're a man, and you like to suck dick, you're gay. If you like to eat pussy, you're straight. If you like to suck dick and eat pussy, you're bi. If you sometimes might think there is a might maybe reason why you'd suck dick, well, you're sometimes bi. Those are the only ones I'm going to give out. There's no need to have 94 sexualities and 194 genders. Any sane world be the exact opposite of a controversial statement, but sadly we don't live in a sane world. We live in a shitty world, where this offensive slur is being pushed by a small number of people as an umbrella term for the entire LGBT community. I'm on this your attitude fucking is fucking video, gross, Phoenix. and here's why. The usage of the Q slur as an identifier is the subject of a lot of debate, usually centered around the term's origin and whether it's appropriate to use the term or not. Unfortunately, the uh, no, uh, my thing is, is, what does it cover? You have lesbian, you have gay, you have bi. Um, what else is there? The debate itself splits into two separate camps, only one of which I hold a strong and passionate objection to. The first camp are people who choose to use the Q slur as a self-identifier because... I don't really know why. Everyone seems to have different reasons for using it, but the general gist of it is that the dozens of other terms are not good enough for one reason or Okay, admittedly, that's part of the reason I use the term. Bisexual, panromantic, polyamorous, non-binary femme is a bit of a mouthful. More importantly, it's been- Oh my god, hold up. What are you again, sweetheart? Everyone seems to have different reasons for using it, but the general gist of it is that the dozens of other terms are not good enough for one reason or- Okay, admittedly, that's part of the reason I use the term. Bisexual, panromantic, polyamorous, non-binary femme is a bit of a mouthful. So, you're a pansexual... What are you again?! Their terms are not good enough for one reason or Okay, admittedly, that's part of the reason I use the term. Bisexual, panromantic, polyamorous, non-binary femme is a bit of a mess. You're a pansexual. Okay, so you like guys and girls, and you're a girl. Okay. Um... Well, you're not my exact cup of tea. You do like girls, so, um... We can talk. What do you want here? You're not special. You just like to suck dick and eat pussy. Who cares? Mouthful. More importantly, it's been very important for me as I've explored my own romantic, sexual, and gender identities. Oh my god, you can't explore your gender identities. If you have a dick, you're a man. If you have a pussy, you're a female. It's over. I know I'm not straight, monogamous, or cisgender, but it's taken me a while to give names to what I am. <sighs> Again, you might want to consider monogamy, sweetheart. Again, have babies. Have fucking babies. Actually am. Moving on. Another. The other camp are the advocates for the adoption of the Q's. The hell, you're not a girl's phoenix. You run into it every time we fight. Slur is an umbrella term for the entire LGBT community, arguing that the large and diverse pool of terminology is too specific, and we need to make everything more broad and all-encompassing. Hmm. You know, 
It's amazing. You are 100% wrong. I mean, nothing you've said has been right. We can talk about those fucking jackasses in a moment. The central argument to both of these people is that the Q slur wasn't originally a slur and was originally a term used proudly by the LGBT community back during the era of the Stonewall riots before it was co-opted into a slur by straight people to take power from the LGBT community. Except that's not its actual origin. The Q slur originates from a 16th century German word meaning oblique or perverse, and it finds its roots in the English language as a term to mean straight. Yeah, and macaroni used to refer to a gay bar in the 18th century. Who gives a shit? Strange and odd. It also has a third person usage, which means something that has been ruined. You may actually remember the word's proper usage from the Nightmare Before Christmas, of all things. What's this? In here, they've got a little tree. How queer! And who would ever think? Oh boy. If I can give some actual historical context, Queer started to be used as a homophobic slur in the 19th century. From the research I've done, I've been able to ascertain that its usage as a reclaimed slur dates back from the 80s and grassroots AIDS activism. Groups like Queer Nation and Fed Up Queers reclaimed the slur as a way of saying, Yes, we're gay. We're different. We're still humans in trouble. You politicians, get off, off your lazy asses and help us like you should. Pretty much. Moving on. The usage of it to refer to an LGBT- Then why did you not really bring it up till about 2005? That's my question. Why was the LGBT movement? Not then it was the LGBTQ movement. And the Q I thought was fucking retarded. Now it's the LGBTQ EIEIO movement. Oh shit. All right, so God I want you guys to clip it. this and I want you to put it everywhere. You guys ready? If you are. to use the Q slur as a self-identifier because uh, I don't really know why. Everyone seems to have different reasons for using it, but the general gist of it is that the dozens of other terms are not good enough for one reason or the term. Why important for me as I've explored my own moving on. Another. The other camp are the advocates for the adoption of the Q slur as an umbrella term for the entire LGBT community, arguing that the large and diverse pool of terminology is too specific and we need to make everything more broad and all-encompassing. to a slur by straight people to take power what's this in here i can give some actual historical context the 80s and grassroots aids activism groups like queer nation and fed up queers reclaimed the slur as a way of saying yes we're gay we're different we're still humans in trouble you politicians get off off your lazy asses and help us like you should pretty much moving on the usage of it to refer to an LGBT person is an informal use, like when people use literally as a form of hyperbole. The word is not a kind word, objectively. It has never been, and it never will be. And the belief that the term originates as an LGBT term is not only wrong, it's a dangerous precedent to set for modern young people who haven't read up on the actual history of language. Drama queen much? As a grown-ass NB adult who has a degree in language and understands how it actually works over time. Hmm. Can't get that job, though. I can tell you that you're 100% wrong on that, Lillian. The Q slur has more in common with the neo-Nazi pejorative de Actually, um... Look. Words are fucking useless. They don't mean a damn thing. In a thousand years, if we were to be reincarnated and have ourselves right near, right here sitting at uh, 10.01 of 2019 and we were to be re reincarnated at 23.19, we, we wouldn't know what the fuck they were saying degenerate than it does anything else. But isn't its history as an LGBT term important to consider? No, Billy, it really isn't. 
Why not? For the same reason that the crows in Dumbo are looked down on today. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> I like oh, that really? I'm sorry. Did I miss the time when MLK or Asada Shakur used the crows in Dumbo to advocate for black liberation? That analogy is horrible. Um, no, they didn't, but he was kind of making that point. Just not for nothing. Or shit, and shame on you for putting it out there. Just, just have a seat. I'm embarrassed for the both of us. Even if we accepted... You know, another way to win the argument, uh, Phoenix, is uh, maybe not say that. Just sit down and shut up. The premise that the Q slur was originally a point of LGBT pride with no other history behind it, that wouldn't be the win card so many people think it is, because guess what else was a point of pride for LGBT people? I'm just a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. Rocky Horror Picture Show was a fucking galling film released in 1975 that took every transmisogynistic trope possible, rolled them into a single character that then rapes two people and grooms another to be a sex slave, and somehow, beyond all reason, this has become a huge piece of LGBT culture, applauded and almost never spoken out against. Very rarely does someone speak out against it, at which point a lot of other LGBT people- Look, I really don't give a rat's ass if- Rocky Horror Picture Show is spoken out for or against in the LGBTQ, whatever the fuck, community. I don't give a crap. I really don't care. I'm more concerned with, it seems, the LGBTQ community is being more and more accepting of pedophiles. And I have proved to back this claim up. People will dogpile on those people for daring to question it. You know, and honestly, I'll, uh, I'll say this to a lot of girls today. I'm bi. Really? Okay. Eat a pussy. Unless you're willing to stick your tongue into another woman's clit, you ain't fucking bi. Unless you're willing to finger her to orgasm, you ain't fucking bi. Phoenix, I know it might be completely inappropriate, but I really don't give a shit. Uh, have you done that? I have. In a shitty portion of LGBT culture, as if we're somehow exempt from the same levels of basic human decency that other people are. Holy fucking guacamole. Look, Lillian. I think anyone who's actually seen Rocky Horror understands that, uh, what's his face? Frankenfurter is the villain of the piece, and everything he does is painted as villainous. Also, he's not a trans woman. The best modern day equivalent I can I can compare him to is Roger the Alien from American Dad. As for Rocky Horror being a key aspect of LGBT culture, well, the LGBT movement has a long, complicated relationship with speculative fiction in general. <coughs> And that would have to be a longer conversation in another video. Problems like this are all over the LGBT community, with properties and people who would be considered brazenly offensive and gross in any... Okay. Again, I think I remember the guy you're responding to, and I don't like him anyway. Any other demographic held up and applauded as icons. Rocky Horror Picture Show is just the most notable example on a very long list of extremely problematic fame. Says the woman who gushes about the most transphobic dumpster fire of a Family Guy episode ever, which might I add Seth MacFarlane gave an explanation for that turns my stomach. Who cares?
Yeah, not like this is a mindset that's ever gotten a trans woman or another LGBT person and killed. Oh, fucking wait. Well, maybe if the trans woman in question would have been honest about their se- with their sexual partner about the fact that they have a fucking cock, maybe, just maybe, they'd still be alive. Why do I think most of the trans murders happen because they don't tell their partners that, oh, by the way, I have a big old floppy donkey dong. And by the way, I would like to point out, during this current calendar year, a total of seven trans women have been murdered. Compared to how many thousands have been murdered this country over. So, yeah, maybe trans women should get their head out of fucking fantasy land. I'm sorry, I don't care if you present as a woman, I don't care if you act as a woman. I don't even care if that shit can fool me. If you have a dick, I'm out. I'm not gonna beat the shit out of ya. But I'm gonna react rather angrily about that. While people might like to make the claim that LGBT people in the 60s used to call themselves the Q-slur, this isn't exactly winning the argument because all you're telling me is that the gay community of the 60s was extremely problematic. Hey guys, guess what? One of the N-words appears in Martin Luther King's letter to Birmingham jail. That doesn't mean you should start running out and calling people that. If this letter was written today, the word would not fucking be there because we've long since realized that it never should have been used in the first fucking place because that's how the evolution of cultural enlightenment actually works. It was always unacceptable and the fact that our parents did it anyway is a bad mark on them. But hasn't the Q-slur been reclaimed the spoken dialogue very well? Okay, I'm sorry. I, I sent this back to the beginning. Um... No, that shows the fact that we as a society needs to know that human beings, words are fucking meaningless. Problematic. Hey guys, it's been used in the first fucking place. That's not the same thing. Why? Because nobody is actually dumb enough to try and use the N-word in a civilized conversation. Um, I would, if the context was right. I mean, I would. You know. Just not for nothing, but... I don't even know who the fuck I'm arguing with at this point. Am I arguing against Ash or am I arguing against this jackass? An uncommon but persistent defense of the adoption of the Q-slur is to draw comparison to the reclamation of the N-word by black people, but reclamation and adoption... Oh my god, yeah, they reclaimed it. It's whatever the fuck. That's why Booker T, the Booker T thing, is so fucking hilarious! <sighs> yeah, they reclaimed it. Yes, I would say it in certain contexts. What are you talking about? What, queer? I'll still say it now, I think it's fucking stupid! When they started to try to reclaim it, I was like, that's fucking retarded. Adoption are two very different things. Despite the long-standing reputation that black people can use the N-word and white people can't, in reality, uh, nobody can really use it because it's still recognized as a slur. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. If you use it, you're still going to get funny looks. You're still going to be asked to leave public places. You're um, no. That particular word only works as a slur against one particular melanin count.
If you call a white person the N-word, nobody gives a rat's ass. Okay? If you call a Chinese person that, nobody cares. You call a Native American that, nobody fucking cares. I don't know who the fuck I'm arguing at this point. What am I, fighting a fucking three-way? Jesus, tap dancing Christ. I, 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 I like three ways, but god damn, normally I like it with two drunk sluts. But, fuck, I gotta go pee. I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Good old, good old pizza. Anyway. Let's look at the chat for a little bit. I responded to another LGBT person of color, and now he doesn't know which one else to hate. So obviously he's seen some merit in my argument, Phoenix. By the way, I hate person of color. But we're not there yet. Phoenix, sweetie, how how are we not there yet, sweetheart? You have every fucking you you have the same goddamn rights that I do as a, as as as, as a white male.
You have the same fucking ability to succeed as I do. But you're not going to. You're going to find a reason to stay down and blame everyone else for your fucking problems. Let's get back to this. You're still going to be treated about the same way as if you publicly uttered any other vulgarity, and you're still going to be laughed at if you're pathetic enough to complain about that. You wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Well, maybe that should be a fucking hint for you, Lillian, dear. My school doesn't have a department called nigger studies. <clears throat> My brother uses it in some of his music and among friends, but he doesn't exactly go around spouting it at work or in front of our parents. Queer is hardly comparable to that word, and shame on you for trying to compare them. Mm, in some circles in the gay and lesbian communities, they want to try to reclaim the word queer, faggot, and dyke, like black people try to reclaim nigger. See? That's in context. Nigger is a word used to treat black people, my people, as subhuman. The other is a statement of, maybe I'm different, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is not that hard to understand, lady. You wouldn't stand up and scream fuck in the middle this? of a restaurant, and the same rule applies there. Nobody pushes for the adoption of the N-word. Nobody tries to rebrand people of color as the N-word community. Nobody gets bitchy if someone else doesn't want the word uttered in their presence. While someone may use it to refer to themselves, they would never be so stupid as to use it to refer to another. It is an antagonistic word, and is treated as such. The Q-slur is, unfortunately, not afforded the same level of restraint. People treat reclamation as if it's some kind of magical society changer, as if they're the Supreme Court of language. Oh, man. The reason I don't like the word queer doesn't become... It, 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 you're one of four things. Either A, you are straight. Either B, you are gay. C, lesbian. D, bi. That's it! And you're either A, male... Or be female. That's it! The reason I don't like queer is because... It, you, you, I, I covered all the bases. Like, I covered everything you, you could be. Fuck off. Piss off. I, I don't care. By the way, uh, Phoenix, you're responding to a guy. M miss me with my, that drivel. The leader of my nation has been stripping rights from LGBT folks since he and his conversion oh therapist recording. Name fucking one, Phoenix! He flew the fucking rainbow flag, you dumb bitch! He flew the rainbow flag! You can see this if you Google it. And Vice President took office three years ago. Hundreds of my trans sisters are being murdered every year. My family won't. No, they are not. The mo the most that any trans year, any year has ever been. I I forget what it is, but it's like ten. Considering the hundreds of thousands of cis people that are murdered. So, no. They're not. They make point zero zero one percent of the murder population. Which is pretty much in line with their representation in the goddamn general population. They are not dying... And by the way, sweetheart, you ain't fucking trans. You can't make it as a male. Get over it. Oh, where are you, Phoenix? Oh, there you are.
Well, prove me wrong. You got four trans people that were murdered. Okay, fine. Looks like four tra trans males, one trans female. And, uh, yeah, that's nowhere near the murder rate for any group. Except me as non-binary still. And you know what hasn't had a goddamn thing to do with any of that? And also, once again, I'd love for you to tell me what fucking rights Trump's has stripped away from you. He hasn't stripped a goddamn thing from you. Two trans girl, two trans guys. So you got four people. Let's say they're 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 one and the same. Um, you got four people as just a small example. And if I were to go to Chicago, I'd probably find about 18 people getting murdered. 18 guys, as a matter of fact. Most likely. Probably, probably, in truth, probably, let's see, 18, uh, probably 12 guys, 6 women. In Chicago alone, they got murdered over the weekend. You're not... Your murder rate is proportional to your population. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody gives a shit. Now, yes, can trans people put themselves into harm's way needlessly? Yeah, by not being honest when they're at the damn bar. When they when they think they might, when, like a trans girl... Think she's got a guy and close a deal. She might want to mention, oh, by the way, I'm going to fuck you in your ass tonight with my dick. Might want to bring that up. And no, there is no such thing as a female penis. I don't care what Riley Dennis says. Anyway, let's get into this. A reclaimed slur. When people fill my ear about the fact that the Q slur is being reclaimed as a term by the LGBT community, all I can really wonder is when this actually happened, because it seems to be an extremely contentious topic because the word has a harmful and deadly legacy. People love to talk about the LGBT community of- There is what, Phoenix? There is what, sweetie? What? There was what? You know what I was speaking was true. In the 60s, but what about the people who were beaten and killed by others while having it screamed at them? What about the people who hit the streets every day in the late 80s, early 90s, demanding to be treated like human beings and afford the medical care that, that they deserve? Oh, I guess they don't count because they use the no-no words. Get the fuck out of here. Them. What about the people who've experienced... Why is Magic Johnson still alive, then? Experience the harsh truth of being called that. Why is Elton John still alive then? Why is Pat Patterson still alive then? That slur, and are quite frankly disgusted that some idiot kids would have the nerve to just declare that everything's okay now. It no, I'm gonna call you sweetie because I'm quite frankly done with this thing of, of not calling women that we care about sweeties. I care about you. You're a sweetie. Get the fuck over it. I'm done with this. I'm reclaiming sweetie. Pat Patterson has money? Hmm. Odd. Yeah. Idiot kids like Larry Kramer. Idiot kids like the people who wrote the Queer Nation Manifesto. Choke, you condescending bitch. I hate to get so heated over this. I don't normally do it. And I don't even think people are necessarily wrong to not like using reclaimed slurs. But 
But the fact that Lily has made this wholly historically illiterate condescending video and to this day constantly tries to paint LGBT folks who disagree with her on this as the bad guys who are Um It's a guy you've been responding to. Okay, if they're trans, whatever, but that's a guy. just fetishizing our oppression is incredibly frustrating. Not to mention a community of people who self-identify as queer does exist, whether you like it or not. And the statement of I don't give a fuck what you identify yourself with. I, I really don't. But here's the sad fact of the matter. You're not oppressed, Phoenix. The president that you fucking hate so goddamn much that you think wants to oppress you every 10 minutes flew the fucking rainbow flag! At the end of the day, you have had every single goddamn same right that you had under Obama under fucking Trump! And if anything, he strengthened the damn rights! So shut the fuck up! <sighs> Phoenix, sweetie. You know, I won't miss, miss gender Blair White because she's never done anything against me. Will I miss gender Riley Dennis? Yeah, they're not even trying. But here's the thing, sweetheart. At the end of the day, you're going to have to get a lot meaner on here. It's not for nothing. But I've already gone on for over four hours, so... I am going to end this um, end this little old thing here. And I uh, hope everyone will join me tomorrow uh, for some videos. And, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I will say goodnight to uh, everyone here and to my little sweetheart, Phoenix Rising 87. I'll see you later, sweetie. <laughs>